the more I heal, the more that beliefs and ideas and meaning tend to like dissolve, right? When you look at something, it's not that it always dissolves, but when you learn something new or something different about something that you didn't previously know, or maybe that you learn new information, which completely voids the previous information that you learned, things start to kind of dissolve and fall apart, right? And it's just a fascinating experience when that happens. And a lot of that has happened on my journey of healing. And that's not really the main theme of this video, but I think that prefacing this video with that is helpful. And the reason why I brought up the dissolving of meaning and ideas and beliefs is because um, I've believed for a while now, while healing, that looking at yourself, introspecting, doing the work, that it's not easy. And I've only believed that because that is the idea and the belief and the meaning that I've maybe subconsciously or unconsciously ascribed to the entire process and experience. Um, but I will say that it's a very dynamic experience. Um, you know, not to go black or white, you know, easy, hard, you know, that kind of thing. It's a very dynamic experience. There are a lot of, you know, um, tears of profound sadness, tears of profound joy insight like i think it was this morning actually um i was thinking about something and i kind of just you know did one of those kinds of like <laughs> fuck yeah healing you know just like had one of those kinds of like moments and everything um the theme of this video is when a person is actually just an unhappy person it doesn't mean that you're just fucked for eternity into unhappiness and it is unchangeable it doesn't mean that at all but what it does mean is that instead of letting go of relationships instead of cutting people off instead of you know breaking up instead of you know doing whatever it is that you think you need to do because you think that something else is the reason that you're unhappy or this person is the reason you're unhappy or this, that, and the other, when in reality, it's actually you. And that can be challenging to look at. Um, a really loud truck incoming. <laughs> Taking a moment there. Um, this is why I say that introspection and looking at yourself can be a challenging endeavor, right? Um, open back up the door, it gets hot in here. It can be a challenging endeavor, it really can. Um, but I mean, I see at least two ways to go about this, right? You can either point the finger, you can either believe that this, that, and the other, this thing or that person is the reason why you're unhappy so therefore you need to get rid of this thing or to get rid of that person and this is not to invalidate you know abuse or abusive people or abusive behavior of course um if you found yourself in a situation <laughs> so similar to what i was talking about in yesterday's video if you found yourself in a situation with somebody where abuse is taking place and you are being mistreated and therefore it is resulting in unhappiness in your life that is real. That is valid. And it's important to differentiate between those two things, between you just being an unhappy person, because maybe you're repeating a pattern. Maybe, you know, your traumatic childhood led you to, I mean, that's just the way that it works. You know, traumatic childhoods lead us to repeat patterns until we become aware of the unhappiness that we are perpetuating in our own lives. Because, you know, when something really fucked up happened earlier on in our life and um, we just repeat patterns based on that, we continue to perpetuate our own unhappiness, right? Because something painful, if we just continue to repeat that, it's going to only cause more and more pain. That's just the way that it is, right? Um, but the fascinating thing here in the subject of this is not that you found yourself in a situation with a person that is um, abusive or that is, you know, causing your unhappiness. 
Um, or that, you know, there's a situation out there that is causing your unhappiness. The subject, the theme of this video is really when a person has a perceived or seemingly inability or seeming inability to, I don't even want to use the word inability because um, that implies inability, that implies incapacity, that implies incapability. Um, if you have legs and there's nothing stopping you from walking, you can walk. Um, if you are capable of looking at yourself and the only thing stopping you is pain because maybe courage or bravery is required to look at yourself because maybe, you know, you start to look at yourself and you don't see what you like, very possible. This is why I say that it's not easy to look at yourself because if looking at yourself means facing a lot of, ugh, right? And you were raised to run away from painful emotions and to numb and to, you know, not get humble, not go in a direction that requires humility and requires, you know, you taking a step back and really getting real with yourself it might be a bit more challenging to look at yourself. And that's real. That's fucking real. But if you instead choose to this is probably not the accurate way of approaching things, but for the sake of the idea, blame shift or point the finger, right? It's very easy to be unhappy and to be like, that person is the reason that I'm unhappy or that thing is the reason that I'm unhappy. It's easy, right? Why? Well, maybe it's painful to look at yourself. It can be. I've experienced with it. <laughs> it can be, right? You know, it, it like it's especially when you previously learned something else about yourself, right? And then all of a sudden, like you look at yourself and you're like, holy fucking shit, right? And you do a total fucking 180, right? And then you're like, God, motherfucking damn it. I've got to go in the complete motherfucking opposite direction. It's challenging. It is, right? Right? And then it's like, there's this entire thing that you've got to pull with you. Or maybe you don't. Maybe you just fucking let go of everything and approach things from a minimalistic standpoint. It's potentially life-shattering when you learn that you were adopted. It's potentially life-shattering when you learn that you've been emotionally caretaking people your entire life for safety, people-pleasing. Um, in survival, because you learned that you had to do that, because that's the only way that you would get love. That's the only way you would receive love, right? It's uh, potentially painful to discover things about yourself that you didn't previously know. Um, and on top of that, to potentially lose people. And then after a while, you may realize that you didn't actually lose people. All of these people were really just goodness of fit for your specific trauma. Right? They didn't make it good or bad or right or wrong, but it is the difference between healthy and unhealthy. Um, but again, the subject of this video is realizing that it's not that person. It's not that thing. It's you. But no, I don't want to focus on me. I don't want to be that. I don't want to make it the center of the attention. I, I, it's too painful. It's really just too painful. So instead, I'll create a narrative that that person is the problem or that that thing is the problem. I'll break up with that person. I'll be with a new person. Oh, wow. Now I'm going to break up with that person. I'll be with a new person. Oh, wow. Now I'm going to break up with that person and be with a new person. Insert platonic or romantic. It doesn't matter. What's really going on there? Does this person or that thing actually make you unhappy? And they might. And that's fine. If you recognize that and that's the actuality of what's happening. But if the reality of what's happening is that you're just an unhappy individual, not fucked for eternity that way, personalities are changeable, how you think, how you feel, and how you act, 
that's real. You can change all three of those, and therefore you can, with that, change your personality, how you show up for yourself in the world, right? But, I mean, I'll say it for what it is. Childhood trauma is a real fucking thing. It molds people in specific ways. It has them repeating patterns until they become aware of what they're doing. And if they so choose to actually give a fuck about it, recognize how it is affecting their life, and actually do the work and change. Because I don't personally believe that everyone is... I'm not, I'm not here to validate or invalidate anybody, but I've heard people say that everyone is healing from something. Maybe. I don't know. But I don't believe that everyone is actually doing deep fucking work. I really don't. Because it's challenging. It's really challenging to, to look at yourself and to actually accept your fucked upness. It's challenging to learn about your fucked upness. It's challenging to, you know, actually sit with the raw fucking data of, oh, yeah, you were raised by people that had their own fucked upness, just like everyone else does, right? Maybe your degree of fucked upness is worse because their degree of fucked upness was just catastrophic and through the fucking roof, as volatile as the fucking stock market and crypto. Crypto's more volatile, right? Maybe you had a fucking volatile childhood. Maybe that's why your life is volatile. Maybe that's why you seek volatility. Who knows, right? And then you find goodness of fit doesn't mean <laughs> that it's actually healthy. Goodness of fit doesn't, ever, doesn't, doesn't always mean that it's healthy. It just means that your fucked up puzzle piece fits with another person's fucked up puzzle piece, right? Again, doesn't make it unhealthy. I mean, doesn't doesn't make it healthy. Just makes it what it is. So, yeah. When you're actually just an unhappy person and you don't have to get rid of relationships or people or things, when it's actually you and not the external, when you actually maybe should just take the opportunity on yourself to look at yourself, right? Because, like, you know, I I observe the fuck out of people. I used to do it for, you know, high attunement of, you know, emotional caretaking, not going to say why. Um, but, like, I observe the fuck out of people, and I watch people ruin their lives. I watch people make decisions that don't benefit them. I do. And... I watch people break up with people. I watch people let people go. Um, and I'm not here to claim that I'm right or wrong or good or bad for doing any of this stuff. And, or to even claim that I actually know the whole fucking situation. But I watch patterns. I do. And I watch people that are genuinely fucking unhappy because of their fucked up roots. I watch them just continue to fuck their lives up even more point the finger that person is the problem that thing is the problem i'm going to get rid of this person and find a different person okay you can you can, you can do whatever the fuck you want to but how willing are you to look at yourself fucking b just showed up <laughs> How willing are you to look at yourself? That's the question to ask, you know? And that's the difference between your life changing drastically and not. Because your life will most definitely change if you look at yourself and the degree to which you look at yourself and the degree to which you actually change self, the degree to which you do work on the self, right? Your life will change. Or it won't if you don't, you know? But... If you are actually just genuinely an unhappy person because you're fucked up just like everyone else, nobody's free from that shit. Nobody's free from shit. 
you're just repeating patterns and you're choosing the same unhealthy objects as reinforcement that mirror your fucked up childhood, right? And you're just uncomfortable with looking at yourself, which it's okay. It's not good or bad or right or wrong. There's no shame, no guilt, right? But just why are you doing what you're doing? That's the question, you know? And when you can look at that, you can get a better idea of understanding what happened, where it came from, all that stuff. That's the reality of it, you know? So if you're actually just an unhappy person because that's what has been conditioned and molded in you, repetition, compulsion, the act of repeating patterns because it's comfortable and familiar, because it's known, and you want to comfortably point the finger, that person, that thing, they're the problem, not me. I wasn't happy with them. I wasn't happy with that. Are you sure? Are you sure it's them? Are you sure it's that? You need to uh, bring the mirror a little bit closer to yourself to the point where it maybe smacks you. Or do you need to get yourself a little bit closer to the mirror? What is actually going on? That's the question.